So thank you all, and with goodwill, appreciation, and good intent, I would like to call upon Mr. John Newbegin to come forward and to chair our first session. John. Jim, thank you, uh, and good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be back in Astana. We had a, we had a very successful forum last year, uh, and it was, in a sense, an experimental forum. But I remember there was a lot of excitement, and much of that was reflected in conversations I had with people last night and this morning. People are looking forward to this second event. But at the end of our forum last year, the then mayor of Astana, uh, Mr. Aset Is Isakesha, said, this has been so good, we must have a second one. And here we are having a second one. And I think uh, that should be a cause for real celebration. Uh, and not only is it a second one, but it's a bigger one in the sense that it is more inclusive. Because last year, as well as participants from Kazakhstan, we had colleagues from Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan. And this year, we're joined by colleagues from Tajikistan. So we have an even bigger regional forum, and that seems to me something that we should celebrate. And last year, inevitably, we were focusing on some of the big top-level issues. What's the position of the creative industries in the economy of Central Asia? Where's the mapping? Where's the data that we need for informed policy? How do we calculate the skills that we need? How do we address the skills that we need? And the purpose of this event for the next two days, as I understand it, is that we are going to drill down a little bit more into some of the practical issues, some of the practical policies that we need to build real critical mass in the creative economy in this part of the world. So you might say, if we're having a forum about the creative industries, why are we starting with a session which is called national culture and its promotion. What has that got to do with the creative industries? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the creative industries. Some of you may be familiar with the name Yo-Yo Ma. He's a cellist, one of the greatest musicians in the world today, I think. Uh, he's a Chinese mother and an American father born in France. So he's somebody who understands the complexities of cultural identity. Uh, and one of the many initiatives that Yo-Yo Ma runs is an orchestra, which he calls the Silk Road Ensemble. And it's a collection of musicians from Asia and Europe all along the route of the Silk Road. And they, they work together to explore creating new musical possibilities out of the traditional musics and cultures all along the road. And I heard a, an interview with him on a television documentary a few weeks ago. And in the middle of the interview, he suddenly said, well, creativity happens when cultures overlap. And I thought, that's a great starting point for us. Creativity happens when cultures overlap. And we know that to be true. And we know that in the creative industries, the overlapping of cultures, the meeting of cultures, is absolutely crucial. And one of the essential elements in the conversation we're going to have for the next hour, I think, is how do we celebrate what is best that we have in common between our cultures without losing what is distinctive and different about each of our own cultures? So it's like good cooking. You, you create a new and special dish but you try not to lose the flavors of all the original ingredients which may be familiar to you. And this issue of cultural identity and the sharing of cultural identity really is crucial to the success of the creative industries. The United Nations in its regular reports on the creative economy often says two things. One, you cannot disentangle cultural activity from economic activity anymore. The two are absolutely tied together. They also say 
There is no such thing as a single creative economy for the world. Each initiative in each neighborhood, in each city, in each country is a little bit different. Of course it is because the creative industries grow from the cultural experience, the cultural heritage, the cultural traditions of each individual place. And even more than that, in a report that the UK government produced in 2007 about the creative economy, which was called Staying Ahead, one of the surprising statements in it, I thought, was they said, the, the, the authors of the report said, it's probably the case that when we think about the creative industries, diversity is as important as ability. It may even be more important. Now, as the, the mayor of London's ambassador for the creative industries, I absolutely endorse that view because one of the reasons that London has such a powerful position as one of the most energetic and successful forces anywhere in the world in the creative industries is because of the diversity of the city. It is an extraordinarily <coughs> diverse city. It really is a world city. But diversity doesn't just mean ethnicity and gender. It also means cultural traditions, and it means different kinds of knowledge, academic knowledge, technical knowledge, intuitive emotional knowledge. So in all these areas, diversity is absolutely crucial. And that means that understanding our cultures is absolutely crucial. And for me, that also means that for the British Council, which is an organization which promotes cultural relations and an understanding of cultures between countries, in the 21st century, understanding what cultural relations means in the 21st century must have creative economy absolutely at its core. And therefore, it is completely appropriate that we start a conversation about the creative economy by thinking about national cultures and cultural relations and the distinction between the need to share our cultures and the need to manifest the individuality and distinctiveness of our own cultures. And so it's also even more appropriate that we start by having the chief executive of the British Council to talk about this issue. That is why this is the first item on the agenda. Uh, and I'd now like to welcome to the stage Sir Kieran Devane, who himself is a representative of the diversity of Britain because he comes from Ireland, and Mary Dijewski, who is a very experienced journalist who's reported from this part of the world for decades, uh, had the extraordinary good luck as a journalist to be based in Moscow from 1988 to 1992. So the end of the Soviet Union, the disappearance of Mr. Gorbachev, the appearance of Mr. Yeltsin, she's seen it all. So Mary is going to interview Kieran for 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll move on. So Kieran and Mary, the floor is yours.